Welcome to the second video lecture for chapter 20, uh, excuse me, this is 30, whoa, moving fast, didn't even follow along there. Um, this looks at the nature of the atom. We're going to look at the Bohr model and uh, quantize energy states. Pretty exciting stuff. Follow along, chapter 30, moves right through everything. Um, yeah, here we go. All right, so from Rutherford's model, uh, he said there's the electrons moving around in these set discrete orbits, and this gave... Uh, to the idea here, but there is a couple of different things. Electrons are charged particles. Uh, Maxwell says that if charged particles are moving, they're going to create um, photons. They're going to be, um, be radiating electromagnetic waves, which is what a photon is. And then we had Einstein come along and say that, oh, these electromagnetic waves, these light, these are these are actually what, what? The pho these are actually photons. They're these qu the quanta of light. Um, and basically, what happens is then. Niels Bohr, and so it's kind of a progression of different scientists refining other people's theories before, said, okay, each electron is in a certain state, and when it changes states, that's when it emits a photon. And that's where that energy comes from, is when the energy, of when the electron changes um, a state from one energy level to its next energy level. So Niels Bohr was really the first one to um, kind of propose this quantize energy states for like this idea that there's like a solar type solar system around an atom, and we know that's not exactly true as we moved forward, but there there still are these levels. Now an electron can act, occupy each one of these different levels, and this relates to the different shells um, and the, the energy levels for each one. There's so many electrons that can occupy each shell and until you have to move up and move further outward. Um, now, you can't have an electron in a, like, you could have an electron in shell one or in shell two, and these refer to uh, different states. So state one, state two, state one is the ground state. It's the closest one, and then it's the closest shell. Um, but you can't have one at, like, 1.5 or 1.69, or 2.23. It's only at whole numbers. Each one has a set um, value, and this is what we mean by quantize. Um, there is a set value that it can, it can either be one or the other, not in between. Now, before actually any of uh, Bohr's work, and I think most of Rutherford's work, there was a guy named Johann Balmer who, looking at um, emission spectrums, uh, determined that there was actually a formula, an empirical formula, um, for uh, the experimental launch. So they're doing all these experiments, and he was able to say, oh, there's a formula for this, and it's based on these different uh, states or so, and they, they kind of loosely form. And then there's a couple other different, and this is what we refer to as the bomber series for certain uh, wavelengths within a certain section. They're kind of the middle wavelengths. Then you have um, the... Lyman series, therefore, uh, actually for shorter wavelengths. And finally, you have the Passion series, which is not even shown on here, which are for longer wavelengths. But there are many, many possible tra tra transitioning, and this is what all these different series show, is that you can have uh, steps where the electrons will drop down to the ground state or to the second state or to the third state, et cetera, et cetera. And they cannot move between different states, but... Um, there are just all these different transitions. So you can have all sorts of different um, emission rates depending on how high the energy is and, that, and how many steps it's going down and from where to where. So this is kind of the idea. And it's all, as I said, quantized, which means there's all one value is going from, say, for example, 5 to 2 or 4 to 2, but not to 2.5. You'll never find that. Don't worry, it's the exact same slide. I'm just going to talk a little bit more about it, but I want to put it on a new little thing. So, in order to ionize, and this is for hydrogen here, this means to eject the electron, you would need to take and add 13.6 electron volts because for hydrogen, it takes to go from the ground state all the way up to the um, kind of infinity state or whatever, you say, or a very high energy state, and that means ejecting electron, it's going to take 13.6 electron volts to eject the electron. Now, 
if let's say you're going from the first from the ground state N1 to N2, you would find the difference between the two states, and you would and that would be how much energy is required to either absorb in order to go up from the ground state to the second state. Or how much energy would be emitted by an electron moving from the second state down to the ground state. And that would be 10.2 electron volts based on this. And this is just for hydrogen. We can now apply what we know about de Broglie's wavelength to the electrons moving within the orbit um, around a nucleus. And we get start to get a more complete picture of what's actually happening. So instead of just following along in a set kind of planetary orbit, these, these particles are actually uh, moving and behaving like waves. And I'll show you why in a second. While they're standing waves, they're interacting with themselves. And you can only have set wavelengths um, within a set um, orientation. And this also gives us the idea of the uncertainty principle with Heisenberg. Because you can either know the speed along the wave, so you know the wavelength that's going to tell you the speed over some distance, but if you really want to know the position, you're going to actually have to find just a small section of the wave, and you won't be able to actually under, fully understand how long the wavelength is. But um, each one of these, there's only, you only have set wavelengths fit within a certain um, orbit because it has to produce a standing wave. So as this particle moves around the atom, this electron, you have this wave that it's really moving as a wave particle at this, uh, as a wave at, at this moment. Um, and when it doesn't uh, close back on its same path or within a, a standing wave version of its path, it's going to destructively interfere. And when it destructively interferes, that means it's going to lose energy and it's going to kind of die out or go back down to a uh, lower state where it will actually um, correctly interfere back on itself and form a standing wave pattern. The quantum number also refers to the number of wavelengths. So here in this first thing, you have two full wavelengths going on of a standing wave. So as it, go, as it moves around the circle or moves around this path, it's going to be able to complete two full wavelengths as it goes back and forth. Um, you have a wavelength as it corresponds to this quantum number for each one, one, two, five, six, et cetera. You have four, you have seven, et cetera, going all the way up there. But each one refers to the number of set wavelengths. And you can't ever have a half of a wavelength in here. Otherwise, it wouldn't follow along with its quantum number. And it would cancel each other out. And they would just destructively interfere until it moved down to a lower state. All right, the problem for this video. Some atom has stationary states of E1 equals to zero electron volts. Energy level 2 has 2 electron volts, and energy level 3 has 5 electron volts. What wavelengths are observed in the emission spectrum for this atom? Now, think about, I would first draw a picture and think about trying to set this up and saying, okay, well, it can go from state 2 to state 1, it can go from state 3 to state 2, state 3 to state 1, and how much energy is released in each one of those states. And those will correspond to a certain wavelength for a photon. So go through, do that, and once you have actually the, you actually calculate the energy first, and then from that, you can calculate the uh, wavelength in a couple of steps. So go through, try that. I'll put the answers in online. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow in class.